I went out to Camp Pendleton. He said, watch out for the tarantulas. And I thought, you know, I never saw a tarantula the whole time I was in Camp Pendleton. When I was there, many people said, there's a lot of tarantulas. So we want to welcome Jim. Jim, thank you so much for being on His Glory. David, thank you very much. It's a privilege and an honor to be on this show and to be able to speak to the audience that you have, not only here in, in, the, in the nation, but across the world. So thank you very much. We're very humbled and appreciative. Well, we're, we're loved to have you. The, the spirit of the Lord is just uh, runs rampant. I just felt it again uh, through you. Uh, the, the times that we've been emailing back and forth, I can just feel I can feel his glory. And uh, that is just your humility is something that is so great as well, too. And you mentioned before we started that Marines do cry, right? This one does. Yes. Sir. <laughs> and so does this one. <laughs> <laughs> Too often. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to turn it over to Jim. You want to tell our audience a little bit about your background? I, I did mention that, you know, being a Marine, um, but how God took you out of the world, too. I, I will, and I wanted to say that what I had prayed about, each night I pray and spend time with the Lord as a friend, and I'm always asking the same question every night. And people may think it's it's unusual when you talk to, in their opinion, God, but he's my friend. Mm -hmm. And so each night I ask him, I said, how are you feeling? And what are you thinking about? And it's surprising some of the things that uh, affect him. And, and that's one that we're going to talk about today. Okay. I had notes that I thought I was going to talk about. But just as you and I were talking, the Holy Spirit said, uh, put those aside. I've got something else because I want to reach out not only to those that follow me, but I want to reach out to the people that love this nation, people that love uh, the principles that we stand for. There are many conservatives that do not follow Christ, but they value integrity, they value honesty, they value the freedoms we have in this nation, uh, they love our flag, they love the national anthem. So I'm speaking to a vast audience, not only just to those that follow Christ, but to those that have a good, decent heart. Um, I'll come on at another time. The Lord had given me uh, many visions, uh, but early on in life, and I'll give you one example, and it's a little unusual. Uh, my mother, who was mostly Cherokee, uh, had told me when I was born that my name would was given to her by the Lord to call me Joseph, which is my given name. Mm -hmm. And that stuck with me for a long time. And actually, I tried to run from that for a long time, not knowing what that meant. Because she said, God has a plan for you and he's going to use you. Well, not knowing much about God, that, that, that frightened me. Uh, kind of like Jonah, I went in a different direction. But in his mercy and his grace, he, he came and saved me. But he told me at an early age, he said, I'm not going to let men teach you. I'm going to teach you. Amen. And even then, I didn't understand and I'll give you one example, and then I'll get into what the Holy Spirit wants to talk about. Uh, I had been saved in 1976, and I didn't know anything about the Lord. I didn't know much about Jesus, and I had certainly didn't hear about the Holy Spirit. Uh, I just thought it was a word you, you, you pronounce. Um, after three months of being saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and uh, the Lord appearing at my uh, foot of my bed and uh, spending just a few minutes with me uh, and broke me and broke everything in me. Uh, I, I turned my life over to the Lord. About three months after that, I started on my own being naive, going to nursing homes on the way home from church. And I can remember making my rounds and just saying scriptures and prayers over different people. But this is how the Lord teaches you uh, when he teaches you. Um, I met an individual there that uh, when I walked in the room, even being a, a young, naive Christian, it, it felt cold and it, it felt cold and, and it was um, it was evil. And, and I didn't even know what evil was at that time. And I continued to visit this individual and, and pray over him. And the more and more I realized uh, this was an evil man, and, and he would speak in a language that I didn't understand. 
and being a stock still from the Bethany family in uh, Baton Rouge, right outside of Baker, I was able to get one of the elders to come with me. And he, he walked in the room, looked at the man, the elder was about 80 years old, and walked out, and so I followed him. I said, well, Brother Beard, what's wrong? He said, that's a warlock. That's, that's his devil language. I didn't even know what that was. Hmm. But it was amazing as I continued to visit uh, the nursing home, and they gave, they gave me carte blanche. As soon as I would drive in the parking lot, I would get a excruciating headache. And when I would walk in the front door, the receptionist area would be empty, and I could hear him beginning to curse me and yell at me as I was coming down the hallway. And even though I'm a simple Cajun, I was able to add together, how in the world does he know I'm here? And why is he cursing me like that? And that was one of the first lessons the Lord taught me about uh, how the demonic realm works. And uh, that year in college, sophomore year for the next two years, I was involved in the deliverance ministry, and I prayed every day that the Lord would deliver me out of that. So uh, that's kind of my background going as far back as I can remember. I've always been able to see, see into that other spirit. I see energy around objects. I can see auras around people. And I, I thought there was something wrong with me until later the Lord showed me that these were gifts. Um, they're not gifts that, you know, I, Sometimes I, I would not want on other people. Right. What I was going to talk about today, and, and perhaps uh, if I'm able to return, the Lord has given me several visions, uh, one in July uh, called the Avalanche, and it's about Donald Trump and the election. And uh, since then, he followed up with a vision of um, our Democratic candidate, uh, socialist candidate, uh, Joe Biden, and, and he gave me another one. Kamala Harris. But I thought today what I was going to talk about uh, was the tremendous amount of attacks that are on not the structural church, not the organization church, and not so much the ecclesia or the ecclesia, but the remnant within that. Dave, you would know as well as I do, when Elijah went into the cave, he felt he was the only one and he was ready to just give up. He said, Lord, take me. I'm tired. Yeah. And the Lord reminded him, he said, I have 7,000 others that I've kept. Amen. And there are many times that Kimberly and I and Luke, our son, we, we felt these attacks. Uh, and I've been attacked at the level of principalities because of my position as a prophet to the nation. Uh, and two occasions uh, came close to, uh, to dying. Um, but there is a tremendous attack going on uh, for your family, uh, I prayed two weeks ago, really not uh, knowing you and, and having talked as we are now, but the Lord laid me in uh, his glory nation on my heart and I fasted and prayed and you confirmed later that that in, in fact was the truth. Amen, it was. So what, what I want to, what the Lord wants me to talk about today, I'm going to introduce a program called the Gold Star Program, Family Program. Uh, and I'll tell you how it derived, but the Lord wants me to go in a different direction first. And again, I'm speaking to everyone. I'm speaking to people that follow Christ. I'm speaking to those that don't, uh, but those that they have loved ones, um, that when you lose a loved one, you know how heartbreaking that is. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the Gold Star program without trying to be the weeping uh, Marine. <laughs> um, you showed me the eastern coast with California, Washington, Oregon, uh, all the fires that are taking place and so much human suffering, so much destruction, so much heartache. And one night, uh, when I asked the Lord, how are you feeling? And he told me he was very sad. He's uh, sad at the loss of life. Uh, sad that so many had had their entire life, their pictures, their everything they had had taken away from them uh, within a matter of minutes. Um, every life is precious to the Lord. And I'm going to 
when you and I were talking, I, I wrote a couple of scriptures down that he, he told me, I want you to mention this to, to those that are listening. Um, children are a heritage of the Lord. Uh, Psalms 127.3 is that every child, when you have a, a child, is precious to you. And as a mother and a father, those that have children, you understand that. And the same thing with grandparents. They love their grandchildren. Um, if you look at uh, Psalms 139.15, um, you were created uh, in the innermost being, and, and I knew you, and I created you, and formed you individually, and had a purpose and a plan for you before the foundations of the world. So we're not an accident. No. We weren't by mistake. Uh, I, I was told I was a mistake because I was born six years later than my older brother, but uh, I look and know that God has different plans than, than what we view. Uh, Jeremiah 1 5, so many are familiar with. He said, Before you were formed, I knew you. Amen. And so uh, I want people to understand how precious every life is to the Lord. It's the reason He sent His Son into the world. Um, one that surprises me is in Matthew, uh, if you look at 10 29, He says, Not a sparrow falls to the ground without Him knowing. And so I wanted to uh, mention these just to say how much the Lord loves each one of us. And he understands the heartbreak, uh, the tragedy that happens when we lose. Uh, it could be a parent. It could be a sibling. Uh, it could be a daughter, a son. Um, there was an image that caught my attention that the Lord focused in on one night and I haven't seen it, but I, I knew about it. And the Lord said that night, I said, you know, what are you feeling? He said, I, I'm sad o o over something. And I said, well, what is it? And there was a picture that someone had or of a little boy in a truck with his dog in, in, in one of the fires that he went back to try and save his grandmother. And within minutes, uh, the car was consumed and, and they found the little boy uh, in, in the car, the driver's seat and his, um, his dog across his lap. And people may not understand um, this as I'm about to say, the Lord cares about every life not because you're a Christian, but because he made you in his image and he gave his only son. I'm speaking to anyone that has a loved one, but I'm also speaking this, and others may discount this, but this is what was on the Lord's heart that night, and it was the dog that showed such faithfulness to that little boy. I had a... a miniature schnauzer at one time and she wasn't a dog it was like my child and when i lost her it broke my heart and i haven't had an animal since because i didn't want to go through that pain again and when people talk about the lord loving he loves all people but he loves even when a parent or a son or a daughter or anyone loses, it can be a dog, it can be a cat, it can be like my mother's guinea pig that was her best friend when she was knitting and crocheting, is that the Lord loves all things and values things. It's amazing the connotation, and I would like to hear uh, your rabbi or others uh, confirm. I asked the Lord one night about worship because we love to worship him. And he said, do you know the context of what the Jewish people believe worship is? And I said, no, sir, I don't. And he said, the context of worship is if you had like a golden retriever named Maze that would come and sit beside you and lick your hand or just want to put his head on your feet and be close to you, 
Um, that's a pain when we lose that and it breaks our heart. And the Lord is a part of that. He understands that. So when he gave me this program, the Gold Star Family, I went to lay down one afternoon. I, I don't sleep much at night. I don't know why the Lord likes to talk to me during the third watch. Yeah. Uh, between 12 and 3, I've asked him, what's wrong with the first watch? <laughs> uh, you know, second watch is pretty good, too. <laughs> but for me, it seems like it's always the third watch yeah. uh, from 12 to 3. And as my wife is listening and my son and others, there are many nights I don't sleep the entire night. Uh, being shown things, being talked to about things, uh, prophecies, and just visiting uh, with the Lord. And, and when he says, I'm hurting over the loss of a little boy and a dog, then you know how tender our Lord is. So, Jack, if you would, I, I will uh, look at the few sheets, the slides on the Gold Star program, walk a little bit through it, and then I'll finish up. Okay. Can we have those slides? You got, he's got slide one up. Slide one is up? Yeah, slide one is up. Okay, I, I'm, I'm seeing myself, uh, but not slide one. Uh, that afternoon when I laid down, uh, I thought I was going to sleep, and about within 30 minutes, the Lord gave me a program called the Gold Star Program. Um, and in the presentation, if you are looking at a slide, the first slide just talks about what is a gold star family and what encompasses a gold star family. And I'm going to uh, read another part. Um, the first page just describes gold star families. I labeled this program the Eagle One program. The Lord told me that Eagle One is the president and they're has not been a president in decades that would take this program and implement it the way Donald J. Trump will. Uh, there's a false narrative that he does not like veterans or he disparages them. And that's not true. Right. Uh, the Lord has seen, has shown me not only him and Melania uh, you know, laying the wreath, but also visiting with gold star families. And it's not pretense. It, he is, genuinely concerned about their loss. Um, on the second page, I, I'm going to read this because not only am I a former Marine and, and probably not near the one that Dave was, but still a former Marine, and I am a member of the Gold Star family. Uh, slide one could have shown uh, the pictures of uh, my platoon and people that I was over while I was in the Marine Corps. Um, but this goes to the very heart of Gold Star families. So please um, bear with me while I read just a second and, and, and try to get through this. A former Marine and member of the Gold Star family, I was 13 uh, when opening the door after hearing a knock. Two men in uniform were standing before me. I had no idea what they wanted as they asked if my mother was home. This was a Saturday. Answering yes, they went inside and asked if I would wait outside. I sat on the steps and the door was closed. And that day, the chilling scream of my mother is forever etched in my memory. I've never heard a human scream like that. She was told her firstborn had made the ultimate sacrifice of Vietnam. It not only affected the family, but that day a part of my mother died. She was never the same. That was her firstborn. The next few weeks were a blur. I do remember the 21 gun salute, casket being lowered in the ground, and an officer handing my mother the flag that had draped on my brother's casket. Our family was never the same. And I've never forgotten that experience. And today when I hear 
people like Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and others doing sound bites that sound good but are no reality to it. But they're pushing for everyone to be able to go to college for free. Uh, the day that the Lord gave me the Eagle One program for Donald Trump, the Gold Star Family Program, the way I said that he has sorrow in his heart, even if something so much as an animal that you consider part of your family dies, he feels that. If he knows a sparrow falls to the ground, he feels that. If you have a loved one that has given the ultimate sacrifice to this nation, he grieves over that. It doesn't matter whether you are a follower of Christ. It's just that he loves every life and he grieves. So he told me that day, I want you to start, and I'm going to call it the Eagle One program because of Donald J. Trump. And he can call it whatever he wants. He gave me three things, and, and I'll read them. Three ideas of the Holy Spirit where the Eagle One program would be administered by a 501c3 organization. Maybe they already are operating a current program like this. Uh, organizations must show within 74, 70, I mean, I'm sorry, 94 to 95 percent of the funds go directly to those they benefit. It's not donations or it's not funds given so that people can have large salaries and drive nice cars and do all those things, but that the benefits would go directly to the Gold Star families. Uh, the budget for Congress would be put in place for a 10 year period so that no one afterwards that may not have the affinity and love for the military as this president does can change that. And thirdly, uh, I had a friend that is a three star general. Uh, we talked about this after I had uh, been given this and I, and I called him and he said, you know, there, there is a program like that for special ops. And as long as they maintain certain criteria, they can uh, go all the way through college. They can get a PhD, but we do that for family members of special ops. And so I, I looked at this program and those that have lost a loved one and are in a gold star family qualify for this. The other part is if you have someone that is 75% disabled, that they also will qualify uh, their spouse, their loved ones, uh, those in that immediate family, uh, because they have made a sacrifice. They may not have made the ultimate sacrifice, but their life is never the same and the loved ones are never the same. And many of these families are struggling. And I believe if anyone deserves the opportunity to go to college and to be able to better themselves and to uh, look at having a career. I believe it's the people that make up Gold Star families, uh, members of families that have a loved one that serve that are uh, 75, 80 percent disabled. And I have sent this to the campaign, uh, in particular the COO, the, the two new people that joined. I have sent this to the inner circle, which I've had the privilege of knowing uh, since 2016. Um, and at this point, uh, the Western Journal, which is one of the very few uh, papers that I will read and I, will, I don't receive a salary from them or anything. Uh, they're a uh, Christian-owned organization. And if you're looking for the truth, uh, along with what Dave does with his glory, I would suggest you go to the Western Journal. They have some special apps that you can tailor to yourself and get the information that you want specifically for you. We're living in an age where there's so much fake news and phony narratives that uh, people are looking for truth and, and the internet is filled with Facebook and all these others. Uh, but they did an, an uh, op-ed that my uh, chief editor wrote for me. Um, you know, Cajuns, Marines, we always need help with writing. <laughs> uh, he wrote that and then uh, they published that. But the first time that I wanted to go public and broadcast was on his glory, and not only because of what Dave does, 
uh, but because this is where the Lord wanted me to start with. And so I am grateful for him, Miss Glory, and the team uh, for giving me this opportunity. And hopefully they'll have me back and I'll talk about the storm of justice, which he gave me in 2018, which is now impacting and uh, perhaps the avalanche and, and others that the Lord would allow me to share. Right. Uh, over the years, 40 plus years, I have many, many visions that I haven't shared. There are some my wife and son know that I don't even share with them. Um, and when he tells me to release them, I, I will release them. But uh, I just wanted today to talk about how much the Lord loves each one of us. I would hope and pray that you would look to him uh, for an answer to your life's problems uh, and just to ensure that you are going to be able to join with him in the afterlife. Uh, but if you're not a Christian, I want you to know that the Lord loves you very much and that he cares about you and he cares about your loved ones. And yes, even as the sparrow falls, he cares about uh, the, you know, they're not animals to me or pets, they're part of our family. So that's what I had and, and I wanted to thank you. I'm very humbled to be on the show and I'm very grateful and I want to thank you, Dave. Well, thank you, Jim. Um, one of the great things about uh, your, your, your love of God, uh, the Holy Spirit came upon us before we even went on live. You could feel it, just my, my hair stood up, um, is your humility and that's truly a man of God or a woman of God, it's all to the glory of God. And that's why he called this ministry by his name, his glory. Uh, it's taken years for people to figure out who I am. It's not about me, it's about his glory. Oh, and, yes. and your humility is just uh, incredible. And yes, we definitely want you to come back to share those prophetic words because you've shared them with me uh, in the email and I actually have read uh, one or two of them uh, live on his glory. And they are very, very profound, very profound. And the timing is perfect. So we would, you have an open invitation, Jim, uh, to come back uh, at any time. We'd love to have you. Just, uh, I, just, I feel the spirit of the Lord uh, between us right now. And I'd ask if you, would, uh, w if you wouldn't mind closing us in prayer. It, it would be an honor. Amen. Um, Father, I thank you that you have given an undeserving person the privilege and the honor to call your son my friend and that he shares with me things that are on his heart. And today what is on your heart are not only the people of this nation, but in other nations as well that you wanted me to tell them each person is special to you. Each person is uniquely created. And that whether they are watching this live, whether they're listening to it, whether they watch the replay, this is not an accident. This was an assignment for them because many are hurting. And many wonder, does the Lord really know me? Does the Lord really care about me? And does he know my situation? And my friend said to tell you, yes, he does. If he knows every sparrow and he knows the numbers of hair on your head, he knows all about you. He loves you with a love that is immeasurable and if you call on him, he will come. But I wanted to relay that from him because this is not about me. This is not about Dave. This is only about one person. And that is the one that sticks closer than a brother, a friend of friends. His name is Jesus Christ. And so I ask you whether you follow him or whether you have heard about him, or you're just an American patriot. God loves you. And I pray that you would 
open up your heart. And as I talk to him, it's the same way I'm talking to you. If you speak to him in King James, he understands King James. If you want to speak in the Living Bible, he speaks that way. And he can even understand a simple Cajun like me. <laughs> but I wanted to thank you for joining this, for supporting Dave, for supporting this ministry. And I would be humbled uh, to come and to be able to share what the Holy Spirit allows. But may this hour, maybe this moment be about you. And may it be about a presence that you feel around you that you may have never felt. Those that have walked away from him, he's back beside you asking you to come back as the prodigal son. And those that are following him that are going through the 13 difficult years that Joseph did, the time is coming for your release. The door will open. Opportunities will be there and your promotion is sure. And I thank you, Father, for your promises are always true and faithful. As Jeremiah said, you watch over your word to perform it. Thank you. Bless this ministry. Bless this man. And bless his family through your son. Amen. Amen. Wow, that was powerful. Uh, thank you, Jim. Our prayers continue to go out to you and your family. Uh, I know you go through some severe battles as well and tell your family we love them and thank you for their prayers for us uh, and our prayers go out to our, our friend the general and his family of all the things that he's gone through God's got it and the last part of that prayer that you said is the promotion is waiting it is we're, we're, we're ready to see the greatest time in the history of the world there is a breakthrough for you my friend there's a breakthrough and it's coming but it came after a severe price you've had to pay Amen. Amen. Well, God bless, you. God bless you, Jim. We'll see you soon. Take care. God bless you. Semper Fi. Semper Fi.